Hey, Bash Kids, Bash Kids Consoles. Uh, just a quick video today to show you how you can uh, add RGB to one of these old CRTs. Um, they're pretty much given away, not figuratively speaking, like literally, people give them away. Um, but you can get pretty good output out of them. Um, the trick is looking up the service manuals before you go and grab them. Um, so I found out the other day that you could actually add RGB input to TVs that don't have it. Um, in Europe, pretty much every TV's got it. In Australia, pretty much just the European TVs. Um, I've seen them on a few TX, uh, NECs. Actually came across, I think it was a Sony, but it was a plasma. Uh, but the retro gamers, they love these TVs. Um, the 50, 60 hertz ones. Uh, I was lucky enough to get a, I think you pronounce it, Lerver. It's like a German one. Um, it has SCART RGB. Picked it up for five bucks. Uh, only issue is it's 100 hertz. Um, it's a 16.9 wide widescreen. Um, so although you can play it in its native resolution, the old consoles, uh, you, you can't use a light gun. It's not accurate. Uh, they need to be the 50, 60 hertz ones. Um, so once I found out you could RGB mod them, um, yeah, I jumped on marketplace, uh, started asking for pictures of the back of the tellies, and I found this one in like a minute. Um, looked up the service guide, scrolled through it quick, quickly, and I saw the separate RGB lines. Um, instantly knew you'd be able to uh, squirt RGB into it, along with something for sync, um, and you'll be able to get it to work. Um, I did watch a video by 8-Bit Guy. Um, there's a bit of info in there, it wasn't too informative. Uh, I thought I'd delve a little deeper into how you can figure out how to do this on your own um, with just a bit of information you can find on the internet because these TVs are easy to come by. RGB looks great, um, so yeah, let's get into it. Just before, what you can see on the screen rolling, uh, that's not actually happening it, in person. Um, it's very difficult to record a CRT without that happening. Uh, you've got to match the frame rate and all this other bullshit. So what we have here is a Hitachi C21F100. I'll run through the data sheet later, the service guide, and what I used to find out uh, how to uh, basically squirt the RGB in, inject it into the TV. Um, you know, I used some information off uh, some other videos and that. That's just how it works. Like, I'm not a TV technician. That's actually a modified Mega Drive output in that picture. That's not the stock RGB amplifier in the console. Um, this one's full custom, so it's pretty much at the moment a custom uh, video output into a custom video input. Um, we'll switch this off for now. Um, I'm just going to run you through pretty much how to get into this thing. Um, I haven't added audio yet, so we can do that. Uh, first things first, you want to turn it off. Uh, I wouldn't even leave that in there. I just take it out to make sure. Like, I've got a soldering iron here. You could unplug the wrong one. The TV could be powered on. Like, this shit could seriously kill you. So, uh, you know, just to cover my ass, don't take this as um, full on advice or anything. If you if you fiddle with electronics and you're confident with it, yeah, give it a go. But um, I'm definitely not encouraging it because um, yeah, I mean, even last night uh, I got a few tickles. Um, the tube had been mainly discharged, but they do hold a lot of charge. So a bit later on, when I went to plug it back in, uh, I got a bit of a zap. Um, but yeah, happened two times. Um, Alright, so it's unplugged now. I'm just looking for my little homemade discharger. Uh, so this is a bit of car wiring. I think it's like 15 amp. It's pretty thick. Um, we've got that wrapped around a screwdriver, which obviously is conductive. Um, so I'm sitting next to a kitchen sink here, so I'm just going to arc it out on there. And you will see uh, a spark jump. If this has been powered off for a long time, it won't happen, but I, I just switched it off, so it's going to have quite a bit in there. You'll be able to hear this. Um, you might want to watch the arc jump too. So, so we stick it in here. Uh, also, one of the times it bit me was because I, I accidentally rolled my palm over onto the back and it jumped. So just be really careful, guys. You can hear that. Now a spark's going to jump off the wire under the sink.
So sometimes it's big, sometimes it's not. We're just going to listen out here like, I don't know if you remember the old CRTs, when you switch them off you can hear them sort of like that fizzle noise, that's, uh, that's it discharging. So we're just holding it here onto a kitchen sink and just trying to get most of that charge out. You won't get it all out, it'll, it'll have to sit for a while, uh, but we're just making it safe enough to pull that motherboard out, mainboard out and work on it. So that should do for now. Put that aside. So here, it's very important, Use uh, I'm using insulated pliers. Uh, I'm gonna stick that in here. Now just keep in mind, as I said, there's still a bit of charge in this. You might wanna you know, play it on the safe side and, and leave it sit for a while. This is rubber, it's not conductive. So hold the insulated bits because this will still have a bit of charge in it. So on this model, it's got like a little metal tab thing. Give that a squeeze, that'll pull right out. So you can see there, I've just squeezed that in um, to pull that out. Now I'm just going to hit this again with the homemade discharger. That's all good. So what happened last time was I did this same process, but um, when I came back to it later, there was still a bit of charge in it, and it did psh, give you a bit of a bite. So yeah, once again, be careful. Uh, I'm just going to rip into this main board. Um, I'll provide links in in the uh, description um, for these pinouts uh, I've got everything run bar audio so I've got to tap into them uh, but as I said I'll go through the data sheet uh, in this video and show you how I work this out but for now it's just um, just gonna show you pretty much how I did some basic board tracing This one, we're just pulling that power cord across to give us some wiggle room here. Now, if you want to go all the way and flip this thing upside down, do it properly. You can. I'm just going to sit it up like that. Now, you'll see some videos uh, referring to this switch, which injects five volt into uh, what's it called? On my service guide, they call it an RGB input switch. Um, but it's also called a blanking. So you're injecting five volts into the blank blanking pin. Um, for some reason, I on this model, I don't necessarily have to switch that on for it to work. Um, the way I've done it, the RGB will pass straight through the tube. It's injecting straight into the TV. Um, this switch, when you flick it, it will disable composite so that only RGB will work. But the consoles I'm using uh, are sending a clean C-Sync signal, which is just part of the composite signal. It's the sync only part. Um, when you're sending clean sync in, RGB will work without flicking this switch. So it's only if you're using composite over sync on this particular model that you'll actually need to flick that to five volts. Um, it does seem to make a little bit of difference with the brightness of the screen, but that's all I've noticed. So I'll show you later on the computer through the data sheet how I found this point here. <coughs> Excuse me. That's our five volts. And that's pretty much leads to the pin uh, for our uh, dimmer or whatever it was. Um, so here this switch is always the opposite. So when you've got it facing the opposite side of the pins you're using, obviously sometimes you use all three. Uh, but that that's actually on so that's passing the five volts through when we go like that it's off so uh, if you're not a hundred percent sure that you've <clears throat> tapped onto a five volt because you're probably not going to want to poke around on this while it's plugged in to look for five volts you're just going to want to find it off a pinout um, you're going to want to test it first just to make a hundred percent sure you've tapped on the five volts you're going to want to flick that the opposite way to your wires because that's off then when the TV's turned on, 
you've got that hanging out, you can actually connect your meter. Obviously, you've got to be careful not to short there to there because it's the same thing as flicking it on. Uh, but you can just check that you've definitely grabbed 5 volts. Um, so, give us a sec. Just going to check these pinouts because I can't really remember. The mod's sort of already done. I've just got to add the audio. Uh, another thing I noticed, these things are a pain in the ass. So, if I flip that board back down like this, I'll just show you quickly. Just so it doesn't catch you out because it... it Freaking wasted a bit of my time. Uh, generally, when you're looking at a chip like that, with the writing like that, your indent will be over on this side, and then your your pinouts will match your description from um, however it's written one one to thirty, then thirty one to forty, whatever. I'm just making up numbers here. On this one, it's just all us about. So you got to go off the numbers written on the PCB or you're just going to be working with the wrong pins. So even on the pinouts I checked, it showed um, that little notch there, and it showed what number should be above and below that notch, and it was wrong. So you, you've really got to go off the numbers. It's not even the chip we're working with. It's this one, and that'll be your jungle chip. So I did try and tap into the RGB down here straight off the jungle chip. No, not a chance. Could hardly see anything. So we're working with this one here. So let's grab my phone and check these pinouts again. Okay, so it pretty much states in the manual that you can inject RGB straight onto the RGB out, and that would be where the OSD on-screen display would also um, be putting its information on the screen from, like graphical information or whatnot. So we're working with pin 19, 20, and 21. So 21 is R, 20 is B, and 19 is, sorry, 21s are red out, 20s green out, and 19s blue out. So I've got this little meter. It's sweet because this will show us continuity. It'll actually give you an audible little squeal. So just come across here. This is the bottom side of that ship. There's 20. Oh, it was 19, 20, and 21, wasn't it? Hang on. 19, 20, and 21, RGB. So what I've done here, um, basically, that's your RGB. If you jump straight onto these pins here, 19, 20, and 21, you'll be sending the signal straight from here into the screen, but when you jump onto the uh, legs here, the pitch is far too dark, so it was quite easy to get RGB working, but the picture was too dark. So all I've done is trace these out like this. So that's our blue, that's our green, that's our red. You can see this continuity there. So we move up to here. Now you're not gonna, that's not going to pass through there, but you can see with your eyes that that component is what the signal passes through. So we're going to go to there. I'm going to trace this across, then it goes to there, so now we've got your uh, RGB here, we're going to keep tracing that, now we don't want to trace this component, these are diodes, if you trace it this way you're going the wrong way, so you've got to, with a bit of practice this shit's easy, but if you trace it this way you'll eventually find, just by looking, that this passes through a resistor, and then it passes through whatever that component is there. Anyway, eventually it just leads to Earth. So I know for a fact that this pin here is Earth. And when we follow this across, it, it leads somewhere around here. And it just, there's continuity to Earth. So that's where it leads. So we're going from, I've lost my path here. Let's say RGB 19, 20, 21. To there, follow it to there, follow it to there, now we don't want to go left, don't hook a left, that just shuns to earth eventually, so we're going to continue up this way I think it was.
use our eyes if we want. Might make it a bit easier. Where did this go? I think it was up here. There we go. So that's our next stop. Now you can see that we're not going to follow it up there because all these pins lead there. That that PC that's a copper pad there. So that must be like an earth. We'll just check. It'll definitely be an earth or something. It might be two separate earth um, planes on this board. So we're here, we trace that across. That's our next stop off. So here we have our RGB. Now you can try and tap onto, and I pretty much did tap onto most of those spots, but the picture was too dark. I did however have success here, but I've gone all the way to here. So that's our RGB here. That's our last stop off before it actually gets to this header and then pops out on the cable and that'll actually lead straight to here onto the back of the tube. There it is. So we've got our RGB along the back of the tube. Now we're not gonna be running wires to that. Um, and then from here, you've got your trim pots here. I'll just show you some of the adjustments you can make on the board. So I'm basically just showing you why that is our RGB. I've just followed the pins and the components. Basically the whole idea behind it was the picture was too dark straight off the pins. Um, there's too much resistance between the tube and those pins. So I just wanted to bypass a few of the resistors, which I've managed to do quite easily. Um, so on this TV, there's some adjustments you'll have to make. You've got um, RGB pots just here, the little trim pots. So you can actually attenuate the RGB signals here, each separately, obviously. I'm not gonna touch that, that took me ages. I spent more time just trying to adjust this and trying it between different consoles than I did modding it. Um, so we're gonna leave that alone. Uh, then you've also got, I think they call this a fly, a flyback or something. Um, one basically adjusts uh, the blur, the sharpness on the screen, so you want to get that until the pixels are illuminated and perfectly sharp with the right illumination. Um, and then we've got this one. Once again, like, if you're a TV technician, you come across this video, feel free to correct me. I'm using layman's terms. I just figure this shit out on my own. Um, this one here, well, I don't know, <coughs> know exactly how to describe it, but... Um, you adjust that until shit's right. <laughs> so basically, if I go between my homemade <coughs> external amplifier on the SNES and the Mega Drive, and then I switch it to the Master System, I do have to adjust that. Um, so uh, it, I'm going to have to cut a hole in the back of the TV. Probably mount the switch on the side here, because that's how much length is on it, and I can't be bothered changing it. And I still do need to cut the scut, uh, connect the hole out the back of the TV. But that's about it for the RGB signals. Um, as for the sink, um, we've just tapped that here. So the RGB will actually show on all the AV channels, but it's only gonna, it'll be a blurry mess. <laughs> Excuse me. It'll be a blurry mess. It'll only sync on the channel you feed the sink into. So I don't wanna feed the sink into somewhere all the, all the way down the front of this board, the front of the telly. Um, that's AV2, so I'm just going to tap into AV1, which is here. I think that's output and that's <coughs> his input. So just feed the meter in, continuity. Pops out here, then goes across the ear. So either one of those spots on this board. Um, hopefully this, you know, you can apply this to whatever TV you want RGB mod. Um, these are all earth, so you've got, <clears throat> this is like, they're like a dollar at <coughs> JCAR, excuse me again. That's a composite, which is used for sync as well. It can be used for composite, but I feed clean sync into it preferably. I've got a master system that can switch between clean sync and composite, and that's how I was able to work a lot of this out. Um, then you've got uh, Earth, 
composite earth. So these are a pair, that's the signal and that's the earth or the ground. Then you've got R, R ground, B, B ground, uh, sorry, G, G ground and B, B ground. They're all the pins you need. That's our audio ground. Um, I'm about to run some wires for the audio. Um, I can't remember if that's left or right, but I'll just check. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so audio left is on the right and audio right is on the left. <clears throat> now, as I said, I've, I've marked up some pictures. I'll put them in the description. You can just click on the link. Um, we'll have some photos there. Just hoping this helps you out. Modding these CRTs is sweet. It's pretty much like a little professional monitor. Like The quality is amazing compared to composite because I did check the composite before I started working on it. It looked like shit. Okay, is there anything here that I'm missing? No, that's about it. So, yeah, as you can see, I've tied all these earths together. Um, I've actually earthed them out onto just the negative of the capacitor on the top of the board. Um, there's the bottom of it, so that's where I am, but just on the other side of the board. So that's our earth. Earth is easy to find. Uh, you can just use your meter, or you can just find the friggin' negative marking on a cap piece of piss. Alright, so pretty much all that's left is the audio and then we can um, run through the data sheet and show, <coughs> show you what it looks like. Hang on, so that's our composite slash sync. There's the right there. Audio. Alright, so that's our audio left. Either one of them. And they have right. Oh, this thing's not real stereo. It's got two speakers, what's going on? Are they the negatives? Looks like this thing's just dual, dual mono as opposed to true stereo audio. Those bastards. Oh well, that's what we're tapping into. So, we'll get onto it. We'll whack it all back together. Alright, so the audio has been added. Um, the TV seems to take uh, like stereo input but then just mix it back into mono and spit it out on two speakers. So there's not going to be any actual stereo separation but that's just the way it is. We just check that with the meter. So here I'm just discharging it. And we're thinking well if it's not fully discharged while you're working on it, we'll, we're still alive. Don't do it, just don't do it. It's just, uh, it's just, this video is for information, you don't have to do it, but a tiny little spark, tiny little spark. So I'm gonna plug that one back in. Um, now we've just got to quickly smash this back together. Uh, the only wires I took off were this, which is the mains from our little power board here. Uh, and then these, I've not heard it with audio yet. So, I had the day off work. Uh, we're in lockdown for COVID at the moment. Uh, I've got nothing better to do than fiddle with old TVs. Just plug this back in. Uh, you will literally get arrested for uh, being outdoors when you don't have to be. So, I'm pretty safe here. Sort of. No, I'm very safe. If you've got a pacemaker or something like that, because I mean you're always going to be at risk of getting a little jolt if you're working on these, just don't do it. Which way does this go? Only fit one way. Uh, 
So I haven't done the data sheet yet to show you how I knew which pins were which. I'll run through that tomorrow after this goes back together and go on to bed. I'm probably not going to show you what it looks like with the SCART connector added to the back because I've got to dremel that out, drill a hole for the switch and mount it. Um, you can sort that out on your own. So everything's back on the board. Slide it back in. You can see, probably thinking, oh, you're squashing your wires. No, there's a big gap underneath the board there. That's the best place to put them. It's not running past any hot components or anything. It's pretty good. So that's pushed right up against there where it screws in and over there. Just got to put this sucker back on. So I just like to fold the flaps back like that. <laughs> Grab this with the pliers, hold on to the insulated bit. Actually, I'm not even going to squeeze that in Yeah, I'll show you how I do this one. So we'll just put one side in, like that. Then we'll just use our insulated tool here to press the other leg in. Hang on. Nope, that's not it. I've done this 5,000 times. And now I'm struggling. Okay, one side's in, we just got to press this leg in. There we go. So, let's see how it goes. Um, now, if anyone knows why, it's a little story here. Um, I've got two modded master systems. This is the second one I did. A lot of people mod these for just um, composite out. Piece of piss. Um, 22 to 470 microfarad capacitor in line with a 75 ohm resistor to the composite out pin on the CXA 1145. Then you just tap into the audio. Um, you can double them up onto two RCAs for uh, dual mono if you want. You can send it out on a single one. You're probably going to want to double it up. But anyway, I like to go all the way because composite is shit. These only came out with RF. Uh, I'm not going to go, you know, delve into it today, but uh, on this one, this is a homemade cable, that's uh, some shielded audio cable, that's actually Cat5, that gave me the perfect amount of uh, uh, conductors I need to, to do this. So um, basically, this just breaks it out for the cables that I use here, um, they're a connection uh, cable, they're bi-directional. Uh, so generally, most people would actually be using these the other way around, you can use them for PY PVPR component as well. Here I'm actually using them backwards and sending them into the SCART end rather than having the SCART device on that end and then this end on the TV. Um, they're brilliant. I uh, definitely recommend them if you can get your hands on them. I've got a lot of them um, floating around uh, on this one. So there's our breakout cable. They'll break it out for that. This is a little external clamp for the SNES and the Mega Drive. So we'll take this out. Actually, we'll leave that in there. So demo this one first. It's running through a little custom DB9 serial cable uh, onto the unused expansion port on the Mega Drive. So I've cut cut the tracks through. Anyway, I won't go into that. This is about the TV. Now, what I was crapping on about before I sidetracked this model here. I've got it pretty much tuned so that when I plug it into the TV. Uh, as opposed to the SNES and the Mega Drive, I just need to wind back the uh, little knob on that friggin' fly, whatever you call it, thing a little bit. Um, and this will be crystal clear, mint, perfect, all the colours, saturation, everything right. Uh, but then when I go back to the SNES and the Mega Drive, I do need to lean back to the back of the TV and just spin it a little tiny bit um, until it's right for them. So if you're mucking around with these and you don't want to have to be doing that, uh, I'm planning on cutting a hole in the back of the TV so I can have access to that screw if I use different systems on it. But if you're going to do it this way, you might want to make it like a dedicated RGB monitor just for one console so there's no mucking around. I don't mind having to spin something just a little bit back and forth depending on what I'm running through it. Uh, but what happened was this one's perfect. But, hang tight, give me a sec. This one, uh, as it, instead of using a breakout cable, um, it's the exact same components, but I've just, um, well, I didn't have my Dremel yet, that's why there's a big gaping hole there, that could have been neat. But I've just stuck on your um, red, green, blue, 
that doubles up as composite and sync. So uh, when I flick it that way, it's just sync going through. When I go that way, it's composite over sync or composite output, where you'd only use that lead there, yellow, red, white. Um, that's a 50, 60 hertz. It's just a push button type. <clears throat> this one doesn't have the um, switchable. It's just an RGB only console. But what set me back a lot of time today was when I was using this one. It was just giving me a red screen on Alex Kid. Um, other games looked fine. And what I didn't realize because I didn't have a controller plugged in for ages. But when I just hit start, the colors all cleared up and everything looked normal. So. I did actually manage to get rid of the red screen and tune this to perfection, uh, but then when I went across this Nesta Mega Drive, I needed to change everything. I needed to twist the pots on the RGB, change the attenuation levels on there, mess with the fly back um, control heaps. It was just a mess around to go from this to them. I don't know why. The only difference I can see to this, I, I was under the impression every power console is the exact same hardware, and I've got heaps of these. They are the same hardware. This one's Power G. Uh, and this one's PAL BVE, so I think one's from Europe or something, and one's from Australia or New Zealand. But you'd think B PAL's PAL, and they'd be exactly the same. If anyone knows why these are so different in there, I, I don't know what's going on. I really don't. I can't explain it on the Lever, Lever TV, L-O-E-W-E. -E. They're both exactly the same. Um, but anyway... Let's get into it. So I'm not going to use that one. I'll just use this. I'll use that. And I'll use that. Uh, we'll show you story how it looks because it's not going to look uh, right uh, recording a CRT. Trust me, in person it's it's mint. So we'll plug this TV in. We'll piss this off. Uh, rest in peace. I've had this for ages. It's my favourite iron. I've got like three and ten irons. Uh, at one stage, I just misplaced. My iron every time I had a project or something I needed to solder, I'd go and buy another cheapie. But this one, this one was just kick ass. It just, it was so good. Uh, the thermostat's gone in it. So even when you've got it on low now, it just freaking heats up until this is like glowing red. So rest in peace. You can still use it, you just got to turn it on and off. Uh, probably be going back to a cheapie, that's a big sniff one. I'm done with it. Let's just fuck it off. Hook up our telly. So first up is the Mega okay, so Drive. So first up is the uh, Mega Drive. Uh, this is the high def model, the first generation of the Gen 1s with the good sound chip. I think those ones are guaranteed to have the good sound chip. Uh, you've got to get lucky after that with the Model 1s. The Model 2s are generally just all shit. Uh, you can mod them though. Um, Anyway, not for this video, so let's switch around, see how it goes. Oh, I don't have the audio plugged in because I only just run them. I'll just add that. Yeah, sometimes there's a bit of pixel bleed, it only lasts for like a second and then it just fixes itself up. Uh, so, like, this is a full custom video output basically. So, pretty much, I'm just showing you the minor adjustments. I need to make between the consoles, just so you're aware of it. Where's the controller? <laughs> oh, sound. Um, just there, you can't see. As I, I was talking about that switch earlier, I actually do get the OSD. Uh, superimposed over this RGB if I flick that across so maybe now I'll see the volume bar a little bit there you go but I think it's better to keep this switch with the 5 volt to the blanking but it's good because I can still make adjustments through RGB without messing around and you can see it just changes the brightness a bit so that is on Yeah, all sweet. 
try and get in close here and just show you. Minus the blur, it, it looks good. Um, next, we'll do the uh, master system and then the SNES quickly. And we'll wag. Right. So, this is the master system 2 with the breakout lead into that same cable. Alright, so this is where I actually need to, why well, I want to cut the hole out. So the RGB attenuation level is fine, but when I run it through this, I've got to do this. And how I actually tune this is, I'll keep my hand there, I'll switch this on and off because I want the Seagull logo. If I go too bright there, we'll get blurring around like that. We want to just go in until it's crystal black, just plain black. So that's the only adjustment I need to make between the consoles. We'll get closer for you. Just keep in mind once again those blurs and stuff, they're not actually there in person. Okay, so this is back to the SNES now, um, which needs to be adjusted the same as the Mega Drive, it's using that same external amp. So this is the only thing that annoys me, that the way that it's done. I mean, there's probably a, a better way to do this. That Phillips chip on the board, from what I can see on the data sheet, uh, is actually capable of um, VGA as well. And this video, uh, it's just not included. And it does have uh, RGB external, uh, external RGB source inputs on it. I just don't know how to get them to, to activate. So I've just done it this sort of hack way. Um, we'll just choose a game quickly. Yeah, like I'm open to criticism. Um, as mentioned, I'm not a TV technician. This works, but it's probably not the right way to do it. Is there a right way to do it? I mean, the TV didn't come out with uh, RGB input. It works. Um, let's, let's go turtles. The hero turtles, or well, it's ninja turtles here, but this is a European version. Um, let's go. Different turtles than I thought it was. Just go to one of them. <laughs> Chrome Dome. Chrome <laughs> is a he's a robot. How can he have a Chrome? Oh, I get it. Chrome Dome robot. Yeah, gotcha. April O'Neil. I don't think I've ever seen this game. I mean, no, I own it, that's why it's on this Everdrive. Just fucking, just forgot about it, it's got some dust on it and shit. I pulled it off the shelf one day. Alright, here we go. Anyway, nothing's gonna be a killer instinct on this console. Um, this does have a little tiny bit of screen flicker. I don't know if it's because it's a Japanese NTSC model and they've got like a really really tiny cap. I think it's less than half the uh, value of the PAL version capacitors. Um, I have added a smoothing cap on the input and output of the 7805. Uh, I don't think it really helped but just bring it closer to the smoothing uh, in the PAL models. Anyway, that's about it. Um, if you think the information in this video was helpful um, if you know better ways to do it, if you think I'm an idiot for the way I did it, um, you know, whatever, leave a comment, um, give us a like, give us a thumbs down, I don't give a shit, um, subscribe, I'll make some more videos, um, I'm always tinkering with shit, and that's about it, cheers guys.